Welcome back to CPT for PTSD. Um, my name is Steve. I'm a veteran. I've gone through this process. Uh, it is, it's 12 weeks long. It's pretty cool. Um, it helped me out a lot. I'm hoping that it'll help some of you. And the purpose behind these videos is to just kind of give you a little bit of an insight into each one of the sessions. Again, there's 12 sessions. So um, just let you know what to expect on each one of those and how it's going to go. So um, <clears throat> today we're talking about session five. And in sessions one, two, three, and four, we got used to the idea of we, we wrote out how the event made us feel. We then wrote out the entire event um, that we have from memory in as much detail as possible. Then we started putting that down into those ABC worksheets. Um, and then we moved into the challenging questions worksheets where we started to dig just a little bit deeper and you can see the pattern. The pattern is we're, we're ramping it up pretty good, right? And this week, this is, this is no different. So this week we're going to take a deeper look at the event through homework and paperwork, right? And this isn't really hard. This isn't a hard week. Um, but it does dive a little bit deeper into each one of these events or it, into the event each time. And we really start using, you know, we're, we're looking at, hey, when are we doing something that either is correct or incorrect, right? So there, it's called Patterns of Problematic Thinking is what the, the worksheets are called. And again, just like every week, we're going to be looking at a stuck point log. That stuck point log is going to carry us all the way through, so um, I'm going to cover it every single time. The stuck point log are the thoughts that you have and the, and the feelings that you have that get you stuck without being able to process through the CPT or through uh, PTSD, my bad. So <clears throat> we work through that. We take a look at that stuck point log, and then they give you a, a worksheet called the Simple Patterns of Problematic Thinking Worksheet. Patterns of Problematic Thinking. And I'm going to be reading to you from a sample, sample page. This is the example that they gave me in, um, in the CPT therapy when I went through it. So, I think that, <clears throat> I think I remember correctly and I started feeling like this was going to get a little bit easier at this point. And, um, I really started to, this, this worksheet really helped me identify some of the things that I was doing that maybe weren't really where I should be focusing my attention, etc., and helping me understand a little bit more about what's going on. Right? So it says listed below are several patterns of problematic thinking that people use in different situations. Um, Consider your own stuck points. Again, we're going to always go back to stuck points. Or samples from your everyday thinking. Find examples for each of these patterns. Write in the stuck point or typical thought under the appropriate pattern. So now you're going to take the list of stuck points and you're not going to use one at a time. You're going to categorize those stuck points. And so <clears throat> there's another piece of this that I just covered a little bit where it says... Um, from your own stuck point log or your everyday today thinking. And that's important because those everyday today thoughts that you have really can get you, you know, stuck, basically. I, I didn't mean for that to be funny, but yeah, stuck. Um, so we're going to walk through this. The first one is called jumping to conclusions or predicting the future. Um, you know, if, if Again, I'm going to go back to my airport example. I go to the airport. I go sit on an airplane. I'm freaking out. I'm automatically thinking something's going to be wrong with this aircraft. Something bad's going to happen. Um, so uh, that's jumping to conclusions. I'm predicting the future. I'm like, oh, it's going to be the worst thing ever. you know. And then I get home and I'm going, okay, well, it wasn't that bad. Um, but that's, that's number one. Jumping to conclusions or predicting the future. So I would take stuck points... And I'm going to walk through my own stuck points on this. Um, uh, it is going to happen. A plane crash is going to happen. 
that is my that is my big time stuck point right there and um it's going to happen to me that's the conclusion i jumped to so that really ends up in jumping to conclusions um number two is exaggerating or minimizing a situation so blowing things out of way out of proportion or making them so that you feel like you know hey these don't matter at all and i would say that um, one of these is something is wrong with all the planes all of them every single one and it it sounds illogical but it's how my brain goes you know it's where my brain goes when i get into the airport near the airplanes um, I'm exaggerating a situation. It, I was at a <clears throat> was at an airport one time, and I had a short delay that turned into an extremely long delay, and they said it was because of maintenance. And the first thing I thought was, well, this plane's broken. I don't even know if I can trust this airline anymore. That's how bad it got into there. But you can see where I'm exaggerating the event, right? Um, I, I don't have a necessarily an example for minimizing, but it's the polar opposite, right? Oh, it's not that big of a deal. If I get hammered and go drive around town, I, it is a big deal, right? So, um, exaggerating or minimizing. And then the next one is ignoring important parts of a situation. I'm going to go back to automatically thinking that it's the end of the planet for this flight because... Um, there's a maintenance issue with this plane and me saying, all right, listen, there's something wrong with every plane. And if that were the case, this airline would not be flying around at all. Every airport, it'd be huge. It'd be on the news. And that's just not happening. Flights are leaving. They're landing at the same airport that I'm at the whole time. So realistically, you know, I'm ignoring all those parts that, Hey, people are traveling all over the world right now. And they're traveling safely all over the world. So I tend to forget that point. And that, that's important because that identifies something that you need to start bringing in and training into your thought process so that you can say, okay, listen, yes, something's wrong with this or something's off kilter, but everything else is running smoothly. Let's make sure we don't get caught up in the, you know, to the mighty, mighty tiny little details and forget the big picture. So that's a really important one. Um, oversimplifying things as they're either good or bad, they're right or wrong. Um, this was a tough one for me. Oversimplifying is something that it's, it's hard to work through in my head because I do think things are either good or bad or they're right or wrong. And there's very little gray area, but it, does that just apply to me or does it apply to the whole world, right? Things are good or bad according to my purview. Things are right or wrong according to my purview. The way I see things is my definition of good, bad, right, wrong. So um, <clears throat> if I oversimplify things as, you know, again, there's something wrong with all the planes. That's, that's just such a big generalization. It's, it's I'm automatically saying everything is bad. There is no good. <clears throat> Overgeneralizing from a single incident. Example, a negative event is seen as a never-ending pattern. Again, plane crash, right? Plane crash, plane crash, it goes back to plane crash. And, and you know, in all honesty, that's where, that's where I sit, is I go back to that same plane crash, and I've overgeneralized that, hey, this happened with military aircraft, military operation, and it's going to happen to all civilian aircraft as well. And, and that's just such a huge overgeneralization because almost exactly 100% of the time, that doesn't happen. Now, I can't discount 9-11. 9-11 happened, freaked me out. You know, I get it. But... Um, I can generally start, I can, I can normally start just overgeneralizing everything into a, into a single incident and just tape it all back into the one thing instead of looking at, you know, I can look at, Hey, that aircraft had a problem. Um, people died, you know, it was in the military, etc. <clears throat> and I can say, 
you know, hey, that's going to happen to everybody. Um, it's going to happen to all of us. It's, it's every time I get on an airplane, I'm going to be horrified. Um, <clears throat> I see it as a never ending pattern. And what I fail to see is that again, near a hundred percent of the flights are absolutely normal that go out. Um, mind reading, assuming that people are thinking negatively of you when there is no definitive evidence for this. <laughs> When I go to the airport, generally speaking, and I say this only because I've learned how to cope with it and I've learned how to almost control it a little bit now, um, but when I go to the airport, I get near security, I get ready to walk into the airport. By the time I've gotten out of my vehicle in the parking garage, generally I start feeling like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to peak in my anxiety. By the time I'm at TSA and I'm going through security, I'm up to here and I'm sweating. And walking through TSA sucks if you're just sweating because you look like you're a criminal. And so, you know, I could be in shorts and a tank top and flip flops and just be sweating uh, in a blizzard walking through TSA security. And automatically I'm thinking everybody around me considers me to be a threat because here I am sweating or Hey, I look like a, um, I look like a pansy or whatever for, you know, sweating and all these people are going, man, this guy's got problems. Um, I automatically think that <clears throat> it's, it's embarrassing, right? So I'm mind reading. I'm just, I'm, I'm putting out there what other people are thinking and really I don't know. And then the last one is emotional reasoning. Using your emotions as proof. This is where I think a lot of us get stuck. I know this is where I got stuck a ton. If I feel afraid, if I feel like I'm in danger, something bad is absolutely going to happen no matter what. That's, that's the thought pattern. Now, I've flown a ton over the last several years. Has it been stressful? Yes. Have I been home each time? Yes. Have I gotten home on time each time? No. One night, one night I was waiting for a flight. It got delayed. Um, <clears throat> I was coming home from Texas and it got delayed. So it was like an hour delay. And I thought, okay, well, just, just work through it, Steve. Just work through it. This is while I was going through CPT. And, um, excuse me. And then it got delayed another hour. And it gets harder and harder. I mean, that was the, uh, it, I called it, and, and I jokingly, but only half jokingly, called it my therapist's dream. Because he couldn't, I, that couldn't have happened to somebody that needed that to happen to him more than me, in all honesty. So it got delayed again. And then by the third time it got delayed, it got delayed overnight. So we went from a 9 p.m. flight, or an 8 p.m. flight, to a 9.30 p.m. flight, to an 11 p.m. flight, to we're not leaving again until the next day at 7 a.m. Um, I didn't have a hotel. I tried to get a car to drive home. I was gonna rent a car and drive one way home because it took me out. It just literally said, boom, you are stuck. This is horrible. Um, you can't trust that airline. I mean, I just went crazy with it. That's emotional reasoning. I'm not reasoning the fact that, hey, they put a stop to that flight for a reason and other flights are still going on around the world and tomorrow morning they're going to have everything ready and we're going to get home okay that never crossed my mind i went straight to the negative so um that's just an example uh of walking through this problematic thinking worksheet that's all the questions so one page seven questions six days a week you're going to have to do one for every day in between your therapy sessions um again they give you an example um, they give you a couple samples. I don't know where my other samples are. As a matter of fact, I don't know where my filled out versions of these are. So next time I go in and, and see my counselor, I'm going to ask him for copies of those. But <clears throat> that's where we're at with session five. So session six, I'm going to get out my folder again. Just kind of tell you what's going to happen. <clears throat> section six is where you're going to get into what we call the challenging beliefs worksheet. And that is going to be your life for the next 
many weeks, at least five weeks. You're going to be doing those for five weeks. So tune in for session six. Um, I ask if this video is helpful that you like and, and consider subscribing. I'm going to keep this going in the playlist. These post once a week. I'm starting to get them queued up and scheduled. So they're going to post on Mondays, um, 9 a.m. Central Time, right around that time frame, 9 a.m., 9.15, 8.45, somewhere in there. Um, and then uh, hopefully they will be of great use to you. Thanks, everybody. Take care of each other. Bye.